much. Well, I think when quantity starts to take away your joy for even creating, then that that needs to go out the window. Because if, if you just are producing for quantity and, and you start hating what you're doing and you start looking at your work and I'm like, I'm not even excited about doing it, then you can take a step back and realize, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm completely missing the point here, right? Hey guys, welcome back to the Hive Podcast. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. However you're consuming the podcast, I'm so happy that you're here listening to this episode or watching because we have a fantastic guest back on the show. That's right. We have a repeat guest. We're going to have Jordan Dunseeth well, uh, coming back on the show today because, well, she's an amazing filmmaker and she's so down to earth and I love everything she does. And every time she's been on like another podcast, I have to listen to it because I I always feel like I learned so much from her and I'm so motivated after hearing her story that I had to have her back on and we're going to dive into some of that stuff we've already been talking about in the last few episodes about how to deal with the success that comes after pursuing your goals because eventually if you keep at it, you will find success. But how do you, how do you deal with that success? So Jordan, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me back. It's so exciting. I'm so excited to get to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah. I always love that. You know, we've, we've been able to like stay in touch through Instagram and Twitter mm -hmm. and all, all the different social media platforms that we have available to us today. And I've been able to follow your journey. And, um, I love chatting with you about like what you're working on and, um, always seeing the different experiences you're having. It's been great to follow your journey. And that's kind of what I want to dive into. Um, there's a lot of new listeners to the show since the last time you were on, you were on back in <laughs> like mid December of 2020. And here we are mm -hmm. in 2022 already. Like time flies. It still feels like 2020 sometimes. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> that's what my last video was about. Time flies. <laughs> yeah. Time flies. And yeah. um, for anybody that's not familiar with you, um, they really should go check out your channel because it's a, you do a lot of, a, you do a lot of videos on like how to videos on how you approach your projects. And it's not necessarily like a one size fits all. It's, it's very uh, unique to your approach and you have tutorials on that, but then you also have videos talking about just your mindset and your perspective about the creative journey and, and filmmaking. And it's so unique and it's so down to earth. And it, I, you, you communicate a lot of stuff that I think people feel, but no one's really sane. And so I love to get your perspective on your journey um, up until this point, because the journey journey's still ahead. You're still, you're still on that, that path to the uh, success and filmmaking, filmmaking success you want to have. But for those that like I said, haven't heard your story, uh, kind of give us the rundown of, um, that, uh, that video contest you entered Jordan entered a mm -hmm. video contest. Um, and what was that contest all about? Maybe you just give the listeners a rundown. Yeah, absolutely. So the video contest was Peter McKinnon, you know, Peter McKinnon, if you're a photographer on YouTube, you probably know him. <laughs> uh, and to take you a little bit before that contest, I think this context is helpful. I had quit my job. Uh, right before the pandemic hit. And um, I was pursuing freelance work. It was going well, honestly, which was a huge blessing. But there's a side of me that's like, I really believe I'm supposed to pursue YouTube, but I actually really don't want to. <laughs> um, because there was a lot of things tied up into YouTube for me. I was just being kind of stubborn against it. and um, But I couldn't get it out of my mind every single day. And so Peter McKinnon, I just started to go on YouTube a little bit more. I was watching more like tutorials on how do I like start my own business and stuff? And Peter McKinnon's 72 hour short film challenge popped up. And I was like, oh cool, clicked on it. Uh, after it had already been a day posted um, and cause he was only having that up for a very short amount of time. And my cousin was in town visiting me and I randomly jokingly said to her, I was like, hey, should I enter this contest? And I had like, I asked that rhetorically cause I knew that I didn't actually, I wasn't gonna do it. Like that's where my mindset was at. And she's like, no, actually, I think you should enter the contest. And she's like, do it. I want a day of rest anyway. And I was like, no. And she's like, do it. Make the video. And so um, in 24 hours, I sat down. I made a video for that contest. It was supposed to be filmed in 72, but I left myself only 24 to make it. And it was kind of my stubborn, believe it or not, approach to be like, I'm going to check this off my conscience and put that out there in the world. And it's going to most likely drop off the face of the earth a uh, big slap in the face when it didn't. <laughs> and I ended up winning third in that contest. And I say slap in the face because of my own stubbornness against being like, I don't want to do this. And then it's kind of like a wake up call of like, 
wow, um, it's actually, I should be doing this and it's really cool and I'm getting so much support and affirmation in it and I'm really, really thankful. And, and so that's kind of the story of how I ended up winning Peter McKinnon's contest. I didn't expect to win and it just happened. <laughs> so. Jordan, what was some of the stuff that was like holding you back from, from YouTube and really putting your work out there a little bit more? Because entering, you know, a film contest, it, even if it didn't get shown and you didn't, mm-hmm. you know, win and, and it didn't get shown to a lot of people, that in itself is nerve wracking. It's, it's putting your work out there in a way that you may feel a little bit more uncomfortable with because it's your own personal work and not necessarily like a client's vision and a, a, a client job. Those, those bring their own stresses, but it's a, it's a, it's different when it's your own idea and your own work. So what was some of the stuff that, that held you back, but what helped you to say, you know what, forget it. I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think some of the things that I deal with are really interesting and Um, It wasn't so much like, oh, people are going to watch my work and I'm afraid of what they'll think of my work necessarily. It was more so like I really love talking with people. I really love like really deep conversations with people, getting to know people. And in the social media world, there's there's like there nobody will ever fully know you. They're only going to see this little tiny piece of you and have the interpretations that they might have about you based off of this little snippet that they see. And that's okay. but I kind of wrestled a little bit with this like social media, it's, you know, everybody calls it the highlight reel. They call it all of these things. You see a lot of the damage that comes from social media. And while there's a lot of good in social media, I would see that side too. Uh, Just kind of being, I actually lead high schoolers within my personal life, within a young life ministry and um, seeing how it affects like the younger generation and how they socialize with each other. Like I had, so I'm just telling you, this was like the deeper thoughts that I had of how it just built in to this whole, oh, it's interesting. Social media is an interesting place. Like, do I really want to be a part of that? Am I really like, am I just going to be putting thoughts out there that, you know how it goes. Sometimes you say things and then years down the road, you listen to what you said years prior and you're like, hmm, that's interesting that that's what I was saying at that time. Like I had all of those types of thoughts that were running through my head um, where I'm like, I don't really know if that's what I want to put out on, on, uh, social media? Do I want to add to that? Do I want to be in this space? And so that's more so what it was for me. It was less about like my actual creative work and more about all of these deeper, crazy thoughts I was having about, do I really want to be in the social media space? And am I willing to, to actually put myself out there for that? <laughs> yeah. And so. that, that is a, a, a major concern nowadays, definitely. And that's actually, there's no prep in this, but I have to say thank you, Jordan, for for giving us a good plug for for next week's episode because we're gonna have Heather Ramirez on. At least that's the mm-hmm. schedule of what we're supposed to do is have Heather Ramirez on, um, mm-hmm. and she is huge into the creator mental health area and like how we need to take care of ourselves. So that's a good plug. Come back next week. We're gonna dive into uh, creator <laughs> mental health. So uh, thank you for that plug. And I didn't prep her for that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, those are huge concerns a lot of people have and things that people are dealing with as creators, as they pursue their creative journey. Um, How, what, what is, can I ask, what has helped you kind of, kind of deal with that and, and allow yourself to still create within these social media platforms and YouTube and, and especially Instagram, you're, you're, you've been creating a lot of reels on Instagram. I love them. Um, What, what's helped you kind of manage that for yourself and for it not to overly impact you? Yeah. So, and the truth is for two years, I like wrestled with the same things over and over. And it wasn't necessarily like, oh, one day I just like got over that. And it's funny because I often feel like there's this one side of me where I'm like, logically we're good. But then I actually wrestle with the actual human things that come up of like, huh, this keeps repeating itself and I keep having the same feeling. So I'm telling you that honestly to be like, it did repeat itself, but where I'm at now, I am in a much better uh, place in that thought process. And I'm actually really encouraged about social media and what you can do there. And so what has helped to answer your question is, I mean, this is a huge blessing. So one of the things is I've actually received nothing but affirmation online. And that is a really, I know that's not gonna always be the case. The more people that come, you're gonna get hate, you're gonna get those things, but it is pretty wild and such a huge blessing. I've I've received support over, uh, like support, and support and support and support forever. Um, 
endless support is what I'm trying to say from so many different sources, not just random people that I don't know on the internet, but even people within my life that are just acquaintances, I'll get texts from them saying, I just randomly saw what you're doing and I don't know what to say other than keep doing it. You got, you need to keep doing that. And I just want to encourage you. And I've had so many people that aren't even in my direct life, but are, have known me in real life being like, don't stop. Cause there's something that you're doing that is really good. And um, so that has been endless encouragement externally. And so I've, you know, you can, you have a lot of external encouragement and still not internalize it. You can hear it and still be like, yeah, yeah that's great. Thanks for that. But um, so I've worked really hard on, seeing what other people are saying, believing them in everything that they say, and working within myself to be like, what are these little patterns that are coming up? And um, thinking about maybe things in my past, like what, like, why do I have these patterns that make me feel guilty or, I don't know, such of putting my stuff out there on the internet and feeling like I'm going to mislead people or, or be misunderstood and point someone in a wrong direction. Like my, my heart behind all of this is I always just want to put like, I really just want to encourage people. I just don't, I was, I was carrying fears of not wanting to do anything wrong, which is literally being a human call, call some perfectionistic tendencies. Right. Yeah. Um, because once something's recorded and out there, we know that it's out there forever. And so, um, and I wish I could even speak more clearly on all of this, but I can tell you at this point now, I'm so encouraged to see how, how cool it is to put just the real me out there and see other people be encouraged in their creative journey and actually want to go forward and do things. And um, it's really, really exciting to see that while there's a lot of craziness in the social media world that is unfortunate, why not add to the good side of it and yeah. just keep being excited about doing that and pursuing that. So, yeah. and everyone that's listening, like you can be part of the solution. I mean, Jordan shared a lot of, you know, real feelings that a lot of us deal with, even myself each and every day. And it's, it's not something like you get over, you know, it, mm -hmm. it is a roller coaster. Like those feelings come back where you're like, not sure uh, you're unsure about yourself. Is, is this working? Do I want to put this out there? I don't know. And then you feel good about it and you feel great. And then those feelings come back. It is a roller coaster. So anyone mm -hmm. listening, you can be part of the solution. Like Jordan said, hearing that positive feedback really does help. And it, it helps create our mental health. It helps the person feel motivated to keep putting out the content you're enjoying. So anyone that's listening, whoever you follow, give positive feedback. Um, don't just double, double tapping is good, but like give some feedback, leave a, a you know, a heartfelt comment occasionally. Um, that stuff does really, really help. And um, it, it is a problem that we see in social media these days is that creator mental health. So you can help, uh, be the solution to that. So, uh, real quick, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk to Jordan about how she dealt with the success that came with winning that Peter McKinnon, uh, short film contest. So stick around. We'll, we'll be right back. I wanted to share with you one of the best decisions and investments I've ever made as a content creator. Nothing has impacted the quality of what I create and how I create as much as Ecamm has. Ecamm is the leading all-in-one live streaming production platform built for Mac. But let me tell you, it is so much more than that. You actually don't even need to live stream with Ecamm. You can use its powerful production platform like I do to record videos and podcasts to ease the burden of post-production. Ecamm supports multiple camera inputs, camera LUTs, and color correction. You can build in scenes, overlays, text, widgets, and sound. The ability to bring on remote guests and record multi-track audio has been huge for this podcast. Oh, and I almost forgot, Ecamm allows you to stream and record in 4K. Good luck finding another application that lets you do that. Rather than being a cloud-based application, which, let's be honest, usually spits out junk, Ecamm is an application on your Mac, leveraging your computer's processing power rather than some remote server, ensuring you get the most power and the best quality. From beginners to experts, from content creators to businesses, thousands trust Ecamm to power their video productions. Use the link in the show notes or the description of the video to download Ecamm and try a 14-day free trial. Use code JARED15 at checkout if you decide to purchase to receive 15% off. Trust me, your future self is going to thank you. 
All right, welcome back. We're talking with Jordan. We're talking about career and mental health. We're talking about how she won a short film contest with Peter McKinnon. And now we're going to dive into that. So you entered that contest. You you were featured on P Peter McKinnon's channel, which anybody in the filmmaking photography you know area knows who Peter McKinnon is, knows how big his channel is, and being featured on that is is huge. So um, you shared this in the last episode, but again, a lot of new listeners. So kind of what happened immediately after? Because you didn't know you won at first. And I, I, I remember you telling this story that like your phone started to just go nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was literally on the couch with a roommate and all of a sudden I just kept getting notification after notification. And I'm like, okay, this isn't going to just happen out of nowhere. And I just kind of in that moment, I'm like, I think I know what happened. And I went to YouTube. Like I didn't get any, yeah, there was no, Hey, you won the contest. We're going to post a video. Like Peter just posted the video and, and then people came to my channels and were letting me know, do you know you're on Peter's channel? And so um, I went and I watched the video and I'm the first person who pops up. So it was really surreal. And I think I said this in your last podcast to just hear him say, Jordan Dunseith. Like, I was like, what? Like, this is pretty crazy. And and I saw him play my video and then say such kind of things. And um, so, yeah, after that, then thousands of people came to my YouTube channel. They came to my Instagram. I was getting things on Facebook, I, um, just everywhere. And texts from people who, uh, friends who are within this space and they're like, do you know you're on Peter's channel? And so, uh, yeah, it was just like from zero to a hundred really, really fast. And yeah, it was definitely an interesting thing to deal with because I never even expected that at all. So it, I think that's interesting because zero to like a hundred, you know, just, mm -hmm hundred miles an hour right off the bat. I think a lot of people that get into the creative space, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, I think we have to talk about Instagram these days because it's, it's just as viable right now as mm -hmm. YouTube is. Um, that's what they dream about. Like that's what they want and they strive towards. And I, I have to imagine like you weren't expecting it, but like having a YouTube channel, like you do want to grow it. That's how we determine mm -hmm. success. Right. Were you ready for that though? Like just mentally, creatively, like all of a sudden, oh my word, zero to hundred miles an hour. I got all these people like coming into my, my Instagram account, my YouTube channel. Were you actually prepared for that? Even though it was probably something you, you strove for one day, were you ready for it when it happened? No. I, and I say, I, I would like to say a yes and a no though. I say no first off, because I'm like, there were a lot of things that then came up and all of these like struggles that I talked about earlier definitely surfaced a little bit more after that. I thought about them prior, but when it actually became a reality, a reality, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Um, this, these things are coming up for me and I was not prepared for the emotional things I would deal with. I was not prepared for the fact that I'd have thousands of DMs that I can't answer. And how would I feel about that? Like I, I want to respond and have community with people. That's important to me, but it's overwhelming. I don't know what to do about that. Um, and then, you know, as much as I would like to say that I, from the beginning was like, wasn't going to feel the pressure about wanting to then create for people that obviously reared its head. And um, I was like, okay, I feel that pressure now. And so I was not prepared for those things. I, I, the reason I put a little bit of a yes in there is like, I was prepared for taking that step to finally put myself out there and actually submit to the contest, even though I wanted it to drop off. Um, and was like just checking it off my conscience. There was a part of me that's like, I'm prepared to grow and really want to create and want to share. And I'm prepared to just share the real me with people. And so I don't think I ever lost that part where I'm like, I'm going to just show up as me. Uh, but all of these other things that were coming into play, I did not expect those things. And I wasn't prepared for that at all. So, so you brought up something I, I really did want to dive into and was the pressure once you have all those people coming in the pressure to feel like you got to create and you have to put something mm -hmm. out there. And once you start to feel that pressure that you have to do that, it robs you of that joy and probably like diminishes the quality and the unique uniqueness of what you're putting out there because it, it, it feels forced. Mm -hmm. um, so you said that happened. Um, how did you deal with that? How did you kind of manage your way past that to be able to create something that's more unique, that's more you, that's more Jordan, and keep it fun. Mm -hmm. I struggled. <laughs> and yet, and yet, at the same time, I, I just kept working at one thing I said I never wanted to sacrifice was quality. I just really didn't want to sacrifice quality. Now, my quantity definitely did suffer because of that. 
And I wasn't able to keep up with the own expectations I was putting on myself of like, I want to create a video every week. I can't if I want to keep this quality that I'm doing. And if I'm filming everything by myself, if I'm still pursuing freelance work so I can actually make a living in, in doing this career. And, um, and so I spent, I mean, it's been two years since we talked and uh, there was a while that YouTube just started to fall to the side because I was getting so busy in the freelance side of things and needed that to make a living. Um, and but I, I was able to just continue to, to work and, and work on my skills and work on these mindsets every single day, honestly. So even if people weren't seeing anything from me online, it, wasn't, it didn't mean that I wasn't just working on getting to the point where I'm like, can push past those things. And I want to tell you something funny. It's funny that we're talking right now because I, uh, four months ago, I made a follow-up video to that contest. And yeah. um and I, I, t I had titled it, Peter McKinnon, You Changed My Life. And um, I had a little bit of a hope that Peter would see it just so, just so that he would see, be able to see the thankfulness that I had for all of these things that I experienced and all of these thoughts that I had to work through. And it really just grew me as a person holistically. Not that I had lots of numbers. It just, you know, all this time grew my character. It grew all of these things within me too get to where I'm at today. And what's funny, and I say what's funny that we're talking right now is out of nowhere, that video just hit the algorithm. So in one week, I've gained a thousand subscribers. And um, and again, yeah, we talk about numbers aren't everything, but they're very encouraging when people are starting to come and see your work. And, and it's things even like that, where I looked at my YouTube channel for the first time in the last, I'd say two months, and I said, I'm going to treat my YouTube channel because this is something I'm super passionate about. I'm going to treat it as another freelance client because I'm able to produce my freelance work like super easily. Uh, but when it comes to my own creative work, it's easy to come up with an idea and just let it fall to the side because there's, so no, easy. It's so yeah, there's easy. no pressure except for yourself to do it. And so I officially had the mindset change of, you know what, I'm going to look at YouTube as a freelance client and produce the best quality I can, deliver, over deliver for this client of mine, which is YouTube. And and just really say like, I have to show up for the deadlines I have set for myself. And that mindset shift was really important for me. And what it's done, uh, like uh, the effect that it's had is actually just grown like my creative desire and my joy and my passion to keep doing it because I really do love it. It just kind of helped me to get out of my own head. Yeah. And I think I kind of veered a little bit away from your question, but all of that time in between has really just, um, like I struggled through it, but I grew and I grew and I grew and, and I knew the things that were important to me and I stuck to those things, even though the pressures that were on me, um, that I put on myself of like, I got to create, I'm like, it's, that doesn't, that's not going to be the driving force. It can't be because that is, it does suck all the joy out of anything for you. And yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it absolutely does. Um, and I like the way the, the way you approached it where you, you treated it as a freelance client. Cause when you have mm -hmm. freelance work, it's what pays the bills. And so mm -hmm. you want that repeat business, you want that referral, you want a good reputation. And so what do you do? You, you deliver the best product you can within the confines of like the scope of the project. And so delivering quality work to YouTube, like it's its own client is such a good viewpoint on it. And that kind of leads me to another question. And, um, this is something that's popped up. I popped up a couple weeks ago on Twitter and, um, I see people talking about it, it comes and goes, and that's, is it, what's more important? Is it quality or quantity, quality mm -hmm. or quantity? And I, I mean, a lot of big YouTubers and people I look up to in the YouTube space that I think are fantastic creators um, took the opposite side that that I would take. And they their mm -hmm. side was quantity, quantity, mm -hmm. quantity, quantity. And I understand that quantity over time should improve quality. But for someone that is a smaller YouTube channel that manages a lot of freelance work because YouTube is not the full full time thing because it's not paying mm -hmm. the bills. It barely <laughs> covers the cost of doing a YouTube channel. Um, yeah. You have to do that freelance work. And so you, you struggle with the time that you have available to put out that content that you really do enjoy and that you want to, you know, share with the creative community. So when you're balancing the two, I would love your viewpoint on that. And I think you've already kind of dived into it and shared it, but like, you know, let's get Jordan's take on quantity or quality. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when quantity starts to 
take away your joy for even creating, then that that needs to go out the window. Because if if you just are producing for quantity and, and you start hating what you're doing and you start looking at your work and I'm like, I'm not even excited about doing it, then you can take a step back and realize, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm completely missing the point here, right? Um, and I think some people can get to that point. So in that case, I would definitely say, focus on work that you are really proud of. And that's, that's like, people are gonna notice that. And I've seen, even I can tell from my own um, experiences, there's people who have followed me from the beginning and all of these struggles and all of the times that I've lacked to show up, they've stayed and they're like, we're staying because we're excited about you. And we're excited about the work that you're going through. We see that you're human. Like, I think once we get into this frame of mind where we're like, yeah, everybody in the world is a human <laughs> and we all struggle with the same things and we all like have only a limited capacity. And in that case, like the, so quantity, um, like we just don't all have the capacity to, to produce the quantity that we want at times. And to be just okay with that, release the pressure and be like, man, that's all right. Now I do believe consistency is important, but I think it shouldn't sacrifice your joy for creating. It shouldn't sacrifice creating work that you're proud for others to see and you're proud to share yourself. And in that regard, I don't think I don't think quantity just for the sake of growth is fulfilling at all. You know, sure, you might produce a lot of work and you might see growth because you just have a lot out there. But in the end, if you're not fulfilled by it at all, then what was the point? So yeah. that's kind of my thought. And and so I definitely am. I mean, you've heard me say it. Yes, is quality is definitely a higher priority for me because I want to create work that I'm excited that people will be really excited to see. And I'm excited to share with people. And ultimately, that is the more fulfilling route. So I want to get to the end of my career and be like, I really created what I loved and I didn't lose that. I didn't lose my love for this craft because I just did what the algorithm told me to and what everybody told me to. So I think that's such, that's a great advice and a great outlook. And I hope a lot of people really take away from that, that, that same feeling that you, when you, at the end of the day, you know, when, when you're old and you're looking back at your creative work, like I'm just happy I put out stuff that I was passionate about and that I liked. Um, Cause mm-hmm. ultimately that is what's going to be the most important thing. And, you know, some of this, and there's going to be future episodes talking about this, talking about bad YouTube advice, bad creative advice. Um, and not that there's, well, there is bad mm-hmm. advice out there. <laughs> Let me specify that there is bad advice, mm-hmm. but some advice can be bad when it's not the right advice for you at where you're at in your creative journey. Um, you know, just start is great. If you're just like, you need that push to get going. Mm-hmm. And even, even when you've been going for a while and you take a break, you need to just start to get back into the swing of things because it can it can be difficult. So that's why I always say just start, just get going. But after you get going, like there's other advice that is more practical to you than some stuff that it you know for beginners. And I think that quality versus quantity isn't like I I don't want to say like quantity is more important, and I don't want to say quality is more important because I think they're both as important. But it depends where you're at in your creative journey when you're mm-hmm. first starting out. Um, I think you got to put out quality over quantity because if you're just putting out quantity and you're putting out a bunch of junk because the quality is not that good, you only have one chance to make a first impression. And so you're Mm -hmm. going to lose out on that. So if you put something that's really good out there versus a bunch of just mediocre stuff, that one really good thing is going to pay off a a lot more. But as you get better at quality, you're going to get better at doing that quality quicker. And so you'll be able to put out that more quantity. And so I think it starts to it starts to level out to a point to where when you're really experienced, you want that quality and that quantity to kind of like level out and match up. Mm-hmm. Yes, like Peter McKinnon puts out a lot and it's a lot of quality. Could he put out less and have the quality even more? Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. But would it be as beneficial at where he's at now? No, nah, he's probably really good where he's at now, putting a lot of content and a lot of quality content out there. So it's kind of like that juggling thing. It all just depends at where you're at. And it's it's hard to say for one individual, but that's what I have to say about quantity yeah. versus quantity. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate I also your think sharing your people some, Sorry. I also think people sometimes forget that like some of these bigger creators, they also have a lot of help, you know, and and a lot of the times when people are starting out themselves, like it's just you and you don't have the capacity to do everything that the biggest people are doing. And so I like to often within my own like craft and career, just go back to go back to the, the space when nobody was watching, you know, 
why was I creating then? I was creating because I loved it. And what, what was I doing? I was trying out new things. I was experimenting. I was growing. I was creating. And like, that's what our world used to be like. <laughs> we used to not have everybody watching everything that we're doing all the time. And and yet people still create it because we're just creative by nature, right? Like we're, we're made to be creative. And, and so going back to that mindset and and while there's a lot of practical advice, like I, I love the practical advice of business and growing and that kind of stuff, it's really, really fun. But if you start missing this original piece of like, yeah, I'm creating because that is what, like I'm creating out of me and out of what I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to lose my point, but I, it's just, I, I get excited about that viewpoint to come back to yourself and be like, let's forget about everybody watching what everybody else is saying. And let me just put out the quantity and the quality and more quantity and more quality because I'm just creating because I love it. And then people are going to just naturally start to watch because they're excited about what you're doing. And if we could work more in that mindset, instead of looking at what everybody else is doing and trying to do what everybody else is doing and trying to do what everybody else tells you to do, I think people will just watch if you actually are doing what you're excited about creating. If that all made sense, but yeah. absolutely. And I actually don't think there's a better point to end this conversation on because, um, that was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Like, uh, as, as corny as it sounds like back to basics, like that's why companies have mission statements. They get big, but they always kind of, you can revert back to that mission statement. What were we all about when we first started? What was our initial goal? What did we want to do? And keeping that in focus when this huge growth comes, like it came from for, for Jordan and it comes for a lot of different creators going back to the basics. So you don't get lost with all the success and get overwhelmed and have that emotional roller coaster that every creative goes through the, uh, the highs and the lows mm -hmm. back to that mission statement to keep, keep what you're doing successful because it's fun for you and you're putting out the content you want to. So Jordan, thanks so mm -hmm. much for your time. Thanks for coming back on the show. And I think that was great. I hope a lot of people um, are, they will be motivated by you and people need to go follow you. So thanks for coming back <laughs> Thank on. Thank you. Yep. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. So much of fun. Course. <laughs> Thank you. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I always feel so motivated and just better about my creativity and my passion for creating when I talk to Jordan and hear any conversations uh, that she has on other podcasts and when she puts out videos. So definitely go subscribe uh, to her channel. It'll be linked down below in the show notes or the description of the video, show notes of the podcast. Anyway, however you're consuming the podcast, you guys, I appreciate it. If you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. If you're listening, uh, well, yeah, if you're just listening in your favorite podcast player, uh, whether it's Spotify, Apple, wherever you're listening, make sure you give this a five-star rating. Leave a written review. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys next week.